Hello everyone, my name is Daniele and I'm a front-end engineer in the Monitor Observability team. In this demo, I'm going to show you a quick walkthrough of how integrated error tracking works in GitLab. This feature has been in open beta for a while and is now going to be open to the public with the 16.0 release. Um, so far, the only error tracking that we supported was through um, an external uh, Sentry backend. This required developers to either set up their own self-hosted Sentry instance or pay for the service provided, for instance, by Sentry.io. What we are introducing now instead is a new feature that we call the Integrated Error Tracking, which basically provides developers a fully integrated Sentry-compatible error tracking backend all within GitLab. Um, and to enable that, we just need to select GitLab as an option, um, as, a track, as a backend option, uh, enable error tracking here, and just save the change. That's, that is all that is needed to enable the integrated error tracking. And what we're gonna need now is um, to get this um, dynamically generated DSM, which we're gonna pass into the Sentry SDK client so that it can be used to report errors through our backend. Um, so here I've got a couple of dummy application and all they do is just configuring Sentry with the um, DSM that we're gonna provide through environmental variables here, which is the one that I got from the setting page. And all it does is just call a function that throws and it's calling the Sentry API to um, capture the exception. Similar one uh, with uh, this Python application, um, also configure it and just throw an error. So I'm going to run them here. Uh, here. All right, so they just executed, crack, report the error and crashed. So now we can go back to the monitor menu, error tracking, and we should find a couple of errors here. Um, so you can see these are the uh, exceptions that are coming from the test application that are just executed. Here, a uh, number of events. Uh, some of those have already run a few times. And we get some information about how many users are experiencing these errors and um, what's the last time that it's been seen. So, um, so from this list, you can clearly sort it by frequency or the last time that it occurred or the first time, and also um, filter by status. So uh, by default, new errors are gonna be marked as unresolved, and you can change the status from these quick buttons here, um, and you can either ignore the errors, meaning that it's gonna uh, be hidden from this list, and if more events of this error occur, they will be basically ignored. Um, similarly, you can also resolve an error, um, assume you fixed it in production or whatever, and that is also going to hide it from the unresolved list, uh, with the difference that if a new occurrence of this error uh, is going to um, occur, then the error is going to be marked as unresolved and it's going to pop back in the list. Um, so now we can also open um, an error here and we're going to get more details about the error. Um, similar details as before, you get number of events, user, and some, some information about the occurrence time. Uh, here you also get a nicely looking stack trace, which hopefully is going to be um, useful to debug the error. You can, of course, um, change the status as mentioned before here and also create an issue, um, a GitLab issue linked to this error. And we can try and do this now. You can see this um, provides some basic details from the, um, from the event that we just uh, saw. And we can go back to it here. Um, we can all, uh, and now it's going to be linked to this error, so we can always uh, go back and forth between the two. And the, the also notice here how this track trace is maintaining the error description and all the information here. Um, what we can do now is, for instance, resolve the error. 
and these will we'll also close the issue um, that is linked. Um, and now it should also be hidden by from the list if you refresh it. Um, now it should go in the you should it should only appear in the resolved list. Um, we can try, for instance, to uh, to run it again. Uh, this was the Python application. So now uh, this is marked a result, but um, a new event occurred. So we are expecting to find it again in the unresolved list. Um, we can try and, for instance, ignore this one. And here again, stock trace. So now it should go in the ignored list. There you go. And this time, if we rerun the uh, node application again, given it's been ignored, it's not gonna pop back in this um, error list, but it's gonna just stay in the ignored, even if there are more um, occurrences of the event. Um, so as mentioned, the um, integrated error tracking backend is uh, Sentry compatible, uh, but we don't provide support for all the Sentry API. Currently, we only provide support for the basic um, capture ex exception API, uh, which is the basic API required to report errors. Other APIs such as Sentry sessions or messages are not yet supported and might be added in the future on a case-by-case -case basis. And I think this is all for now. Um, please uh, feel free to um, reach out in our Slack channels that you can see here or to create issues for feedback, feature requests, or report any problem that you find. And thank you for watching.